motto that I live by is, a great outfit makes a great day. This motto stemmed from many aspects of my life, from wanting every color of the juicy jacket, to growing up and watching my sisters make bold fashion choices, and planning my outfits out for the week on every Sunday. Throughout my entire life, fashion has played a major role in who I am and how I see the world around me. I always feel that the clothing that I wear tends to represent my personality, which is, well, all over the place. From the time that I could walk, my grandmother and I, we loved to go shopping, mainly because it was a bonding experience, but also because we could find something that truly fit my personality and who I was. This was very important because it gave me another way to express myself, especially during my awkward middle school years when I needed the extra confidence. As I grew older, I began to involve myself in different mediums of fashion, such as watching fashion shows and actually reading fashion magazines instead of flipping through and looking at the pictures. This helped me to realize the impact that designers have on society and how they influence clothing all across America and all across the world. Whether you're shopping at Bergdorf Goodman or Walmart, the clothing that these designers produce is a main influencer. And it's not just because I'm a fan of Miranda Priestley from The Devil Wears Prada, but this actually does happen. Even though I will never be able to fully understand the inspirations and the dedication that designers have to the industry, I'm still able to involve myself such as watching the fashion shows or browsing online at the dresses that I hope to one day own myself. Just recently, I wrote my U.S. history paper on how fashion has influenced societal changes in America throughout the decades. The results were not surprising. There's a very strong correlation between social change and fashion. Let's look toward the 1920s. This was one of the first decades in which women felt free to break the stigma that they had to follow societal norms, that they had to be conservative, and that they couldn't speak out. Women began to wear clothing that didn't go all the way to their wrists and didn't go all the way to their ankles. They began to wear dresses such as the flapper dresses that showed off their bodies, that allowed them to dance. This was very important because during this time, the 19th Amendment was implemented, which was women's suffrage. It gave them even more of a voice to society, and the clothing that they wore gave them the confidence to stand up and say what they believe in. Next, we look toward the 1940s. This was one of the first decades in which women entered the workforce mainly because men were leaving to go off to war. This brought many dramatic changes because women were no longer just housewives. Rather, they were going into the workforce, making money to raise their family. This caused women to alter what they wore. They were no longer able to wear long dresses, flowy skirts, for they had to wear nylon, jeans, and plain shirts to be able to make money to support their family. At first, women were very wary of the confidence that they would get from this clothing, but as soon as they started working in this clothing, they realized they could do anything in it. They could raise their kids, they could contribute to the economy, and they could support their family. The other aspect of this was Rosie the Riveter. During the 1940s, this was a symbol of women in the workforce. And yes, it's very influential with the words, the colors, and the woman on the poster, but it's even more influential with what she's wearing because it showed women that they can be okay with whatever they wear and that they can get anything done in whatever clothing. Then we look toward the late 1950s and early 1960s. During this time, two of the greatest fashion icons of America were introduced. They were Jackie Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. These two women had a great impact through, yes, how they talked and how they spoke, but also with what they wore. 
As soon as Jackie Kennedy entered the White House, her simple A-line dresses, simple jewelry, and silk gloves were emulated throughout the American population. People wanted to be her, and they thought if they dressed like her, they could be more like her. This caused women to believe that they could be elegant no matter the occasion. They didn't have to have a reason to dress nicely, just like Jackie Kennedy. Now, on the other hand, there was Marilyn Monroe. During this time, Hollywood was gaining lots of popularity, and Marilyn Monroe was the main icon. She was very different from Jackie in that she fully embraced her sexuality through what she was wearing. She wore clothing that showed off her body, and such as in the picture, dresses that flew up in the wind. There was lots of condemnation associated with what Marilyn Monroe was wearing, but it inspired women to question why they had to dress so conservatively, and why they were afraid to show off their bodies. These two women changed how society dressed, for they allowed women to dress on either side of the spectrum. Rather, it was classy, elegant, and conservative, or rather promiscuous, and going on the side of embracing your sexuality. But then it allowed women to dress in between the spectrum. It didn't have to be one end or the other, it could be in between. Then we look at the most monumental political resistance of the 60s, which was the Civil Rights Movement. During this decade, African Americans across the country fought for their rights through rallies, speeches, and protests, but also with what they wore. The Black Panther Party is the perfect example. They wore a militant-like uniform that consisted of a white shirt, black pants, and a black blazer. Very simple, but it brought many impacts because no matter who you were, and you saw someone wearing this uniform on the street, you knew exactly what their morals were and what they stood for. That further influenced people's ideals and people's perspectives on the civil rights movement. Then we looked toward a completely different type of protester, which was Rosa Parks. She never meant for her clothing to have a political connotation, but the night she was arrested, she was wearing her work blouse, her work, work skirt, spectacles, and the flower in her hair. This was very simple clothing, but it showed to society that she should be treated like everyone else, not differently, just because of her race. She fit in, and her clothing resembled that. Also, she showed that you don't have to wear something outlandish to stand out. Rather, that you can be the one that makes the clothing stand out. Now, here we are in present day with fashion influencing millions of, millions of us, whether we know it or not, but mainly women. Just a few years ago, the Me Too movement was created, which helped women, which helped bring to light unequal pay, assault in the workforce, and also equality of the genders. This movement is based in Hollywood, and you might be asking, well, how does a basis in Hollywood influence me? Well, women and men at the award shows, the celebrities and stars, have come together to wear simple colors, such as at the 2018 Golden Globes Awards. Women and men wore the simple color of black to show that they agreed and supported the Me Too movement. This act of wearing a simple color didn't require speeches or words to be spoken, but the fashion showed what they were standing up for. Now for people like us, it might be hard for that to influence us, but when we look toward any form of communication, whether it's magazines, newspapers, Instagram, or any type of social media, you are bound to have heard of what these dresses meant. Now, clothing, it will always have labels. 
and it always has since the 1920s and today, it always comes full circle with how people are trying to redefine the meaning of clothing, such as today, women are trying to get rid of the stigma that a turtleneck could mean prudish, or a v-neck could mean a woman is promiscuous. Of course, clothing is always going to have labels, but we, ultimately, as a society, have the ability to determine what those labels mean to us. Thank you.